Hi everyone, I'm back to read the last of the book, um, the part that's called Looking Back, 1764, A Peek into the Past. And we're, we're at the end of uh, Kaya Shows the Way, a sister story, Peek into the Past. Hope you can see that. During Wama, Wawama, Ical, the season when the salmon reach the canyon streams, the Columbia River came alive with a parade of color and shimmering movement as millions of salmon swam upstream. The Nez Pierces gathered to fish with thousands of other Indian people at Salilo Falls, a series of thunder, thundering waterfalls, boiling rapids and churning narrows on the Columbia River. Nez Pierces, like the Indian people who fished at Salilo, believe that the salmon chose to swim upstream every year and give themselves to the humans. They respected and thanked the salmon for choosing to make the journey. The Nez Pierces also believe that salmon people lived in a great house under the sea. And when it came time to run up the river, the salmon people took the form of fish. After they died, their spirits returned to the great house under the sea. The salmon people could then take their fish form again and make the journey the following year. The first time the young fishermen dipped their nets into the roaring river in search of the salmon, they learned that nature was a, for a force far more powerful than humans. Salmon were so big and so strong that even when they swam against the ferocious current, they could pull the fishermen into the rapids. According to Nez Pierce legend, a beautiful maiden lived inside the Salilo Falls. Sometimes she would sacrifice fishermen to the river as a way of giving back to the salmon. The river would give and the river could take. It was a fair trade. And this says fishing technique was has stayed the same since the ancient times. And women cook salmon by threading sharp roasting sticks through the fillets and planting the sticks so they leaned over a low fire. In Kaya's time and for many generations after that, a girl almost could have walked across the river on the backs of the salmon, nearly as large as she was. Celebrating the salmon, uh, celebrating the salmon was celebrating the cycle of life, and it was amazing to be part of it. Each year, the Nez Pierces watched full-grown salmon surge upstream to lay eggs before they died. The largest falls in Salilo were over 20 feet high, and it was an awe-inspiring sight to see the huge fish leap and lunge their way to the top. Sometimes they fell, but they never gave up. In the autumn, young fingerling salmon ran downstream racing to start their, their new lives in the sea. For thousands of years, Sililo Falls was one of the greatest trading sites on the whole continent. People came from as far away as modern day California, Alaska, and Missouri. From the mouth of the Columbia River, coastal people brought ocean fish and rare dentalium shells. People from the Cascade Mountains brought soft blankets woven from mountain goat hair. Great Plains people brought buffalo robes and dried meat. Nez Pierces were especially proud to bring their fine horses, wintered in the mild valleys where they had plenty of fresh grass to eat, to keep them swift, strong and beautiful. Every group of people had its own beautiful artistry to share, 
baskets, bags, wood, and stone bowls, painted hides, and jewelry, and other adornments. Summer at Salilo was the most festive time of the year, with thousands of people feasting, dancing, parading, racing, and gaming. The most popular game was the stick game. Two teams knelt and faced each other. One player hit a bone in each hand. One bone was marked while the other was plain. And players on the other team had to guess which hand held the unmarked bone. Counting sticks were used to keep score. At night, the drumming would begin and the young people gathered for courtship dances. Most marriages were arranged by parents and grandparents, but some parents paid attention to their sons and daughters' choices. This says at the Salillo Falls and other gathering places, families, family shields were displayed next to the teepees. And horse collars were were used only for sacred ceremonies in Kaya's time when the people paraded their horses in honor of their ancestors. And children and adults played shinny, a game like field hockey. And during the stick game, crowds of people gathered behind the players, singing and joking and throwing off the players' concentrations. After the dances, a young woman might hear the sound of a flute outside her teepee. That meant a young man had come to court. If a Nez Pierce man, uh, wait, if a young Pierce, sorry, if a Nez Pierce youth married into another tribe, those families became trading partners. It was good to have a trading part partner from another tribe because the two partners probably would have different goods to trade. Salilo Falls remained a vibrant place to ce celebrate Indian life and culture until the 1950s, when the United States government decided to build the Dallas Dam. The dam would flood Salilo Falls, stopping its mighty flow, so a hydroelectric plant could harness the power of the water to make low-cost electricity. Indian chiefs spoke out against the dam. They told the government officials how they depended on the salmon to live. They reminded officials of the Treaty of 1855, which said that their tribes kept the right to fish at their usual and accustomed places, specifically Salilo Falls. Women elders spoke too, telling of previous broken promises and pleading with the officials not to repeat those mistakes. And on March 10th, 1957, Congress closed the gates of the Dallas Dam and the people and the many tribes gathered to watch their ancient fishing sites slowly disappear under the flood. The salmon survived, survival is now threatened. Eight federal dams have been built between the streams where the sa salmon are born and the ocean where they live as adults. In Kaya's time, millions of salmon swam in the streams and rivers. Today, only a few thousand make the journey upstream to lay their eggs. The creator put the Nez Perce people where the salmon return, and they, and they and all the other tribes who share these waters are committed to protecting this place. They are working to have four of the dams partially removed to help the salmon return to the streams. Just as the mighty salmon will struggle up the waterfalls, the Nez Perce people will never give up. And here is a picture. It says a girls might trade their dolls, jewelry, bags, belts, or even moccasins with trading partners their own age. And here it says a courting couple in 1903. In Kaya's time, marriage to a person in another tribe was good for trading. It meant less it meant less wearing and raiding too. And this says the wild waters of the Silulo Falls 
boomed like thunder. And here's a courting flute. And that is the end of The Peak in the Past and the end of our book. Hope you enjoyed Kaya Shows the Way, a sister story. See you next time for the for book six. Bye.